the treatment part, the main drug that we'll be using in mild to moderate attacks would be NSAIDs. The only point is that NSAIDs should be taken as early in headache. I mean, once the headache is full developed and the person takes a painkiller, then it will take a long time for the painkiller to exert its effect. So the moment the person starts experiencing headache, that is the time the painkiller should be taken. And lots of patients would tell you that I usually do not even go for prescription based drugs because there are so many medicines available over the counter that could be having acetaminophen. Along with that, caffeine. Caffeine is effective here because it will act as a vasoconstrictor because during attack of migraine in cerebral vasculature where the trigeminovascular input is present, those blood vessels are dilated and that is why the nociceptive uh, fibers are getting triggered by the release of calcitonin gene-related peptides. So caffeine will be working there. And uh, if the tablet is also containing aspirin, great, though it might contribute to a bit of gastritis, but NSAIDs are the main weapons that you'll be using in mild to moderate attack. And if one class of painkiller is not working, that is not an indication for starting a tripton. If one class of painkiller is not working, you can shift over to an alternative class of medication as well. Triptans are mainly recommended if there is allodynia in a patient or if the person is having a severe disability. And here the MCQ can test your pharmacology with respect to which are the most efficacious triptans. The mechanism of actual triptans would be, they would be 5-HT, 1-B, 1-D, partial agonist. Mind my words there, they are not antagonists, these are partial agonists and these partial agonists would be causing a constriction of the cerebral vasculature, the one that was dilated by the calcitonin gene or a multiple vasoactive peptides, including especially the calcitonin gene related peptide. The most efficacious ones are resertriptan and elatriptan, primarily because elatriptan would be acting for fairly a long duration. So as such, if he says, though all of the triptans are effective, but or from the pharmacological perspective, if he says which of the following is the most efficacious, then it is resatriptan and elatriptan. The advantage being they'll act fast and they'll act for a relatively longer duration. The only limitation with respect to triptans would be recurrence of headache. Now, because this is a problem, he, he gets very fast relief after giving resatriptan or sumatriptan. But because there is a recurrence of headache developing in a patient, so therefore it is recommended, especially in those patients where they say that once the effect of medicine wears away, the headache pulsating one comes back again. So he says that you can combine that is NSAIDs, that is naproxen with triptans in those patients where recurrence of headache would mean that another dose of medication would be required. As such, triptans are not effective in aura. I mean, if a person is having migraine with aura, then if even if you give triptans once the aura is started it will not help in resolving the aura component it is only once the aura is completed and the headache has started if the medicine will take care of the headache component but the aura component would not be treated or would not be mediated by intake of triptans we nowadays have needle free devices as well especially for those patients who can develop attacks very suddenly and very very severe we do have available injectable form and this would be a needle free device by which sumatriptan can be taken by a patient. The dose will obviously not be asked to you, but still because it's mentioned in the book, I'm saying it, that would be four to six milligrams subcut shot. And this would be a needle free device, more like an auto injector, just like we read about an EP pen that is used in brittle asthma. Similarly here, sumatriptan can be used in those patients where the attacks can occur suddenly and can hamper professional competency of a person. As far as the efficacy of sumatriptan is concerned, it would be about 50 to 80%. On a comparison basis, I can say dihydroergotamine, the efficacy, if we give one milligram subcutaneous or intramuscular dihydroergotamine, the efficacy would be 80 to 90%. I repeat again, efficacy of sumatriptan, if given as a parenteral shot to relieve a severe headache component could be in the range of 50 to 80%. If you compare this with one milligram shot of dihydroergotamine, the efficacy would be 80 to 90%. Plus we have a couple of triptans available as a nasal spray as well. The advantage of nasal spray would again be that uh, it will be relatively fast acting. And especially, I mean, apart from fast acting, you say a lot of my patients might be having nausea and vomiting. To the level the person will say that even if you keep the tablet, like you wrote a sumatriptan mouth dissolving tablet for the patient. He says, forget about taking the tablet with water. Even if I keep something in my tongue, I feel so pukish. So for those patients of ours who are not able to, who are not able to, you know, take a tablet also mainly because of the nausea and the vomiting component, we can be giving a nasal spray of Zolmetriptan or we can be giving a nasal spray of Sumatriptan. So these are, I mean, aspects to be remembered for triptans and most of the time either he's going to ask you about the most efficacious one or he can ask you about the mechanism of action, which is that it is a partial agonist. 
and these drugs would not be recommended because they're causing a vasoconstriction. So these drugs would not be recommended in patients who are having ischemic heart disease. In fact, we will discuss subsequently about a category which can be used even in migraine patients with a concomitant ischemic heart disease, but uh, triptans would not be recommended because of the vasoconstrictive activity. And on a comparison, as I explained, if we are giving sumatriptan subcut versus dihydroergotamine one milligram subcut, then dihydroergotamine will be having a higher efficacy about 18 to 90% success in terminating the severe attack of migraine in contrast to a person who had taken a sumatriptan per se. So, I mean, depending on whichever is available, any of the two can be given, but these figures are important and that is why I had to share these with you. The next drug category to be remembered for elevation of symptoms in a severe case of migraine would be GPANTs. There are two of them that I would like to speak. That is Rime GPANT and Urbo GPANT. The advantage of these molecules is that they are blocking the effect of CGRP on its receptor. The calcitonin generated peptide is not being allowed to act on its receptor. Therefore, the trigeminovascular stimulation will not be able to occur and the person will tend to become pain free at the end of approximately two hours. The advantage is also that the recurrence of pain usually once the effect of the drug is over is relatively lesser as compared to triptans where we were doing polypharmacy and we might have to give in case there's a recurrence of headache after triptans that is naproxen and triptans would be required. The 5 ST receptor agonists I've already spoken about that is dihydroergotamine or plain ergotamine. Dihydroergotamine is available even as a nasal spray. Two molecules which were available as a nasal spray on the previous slide was zolmetriptan and sumatriptan. Now dihydroergotamine has also been added. And the advantage of this molecule is it can be fast acting, can be given intramuscularly or subcutaneous. And the efficacy of this is higher as compared to, I mean, the parenteral dihydroergotamine efficacy on a head to head trial has been found to be relatively superior to the efficacy of sumatriptan. The next drug category to be remembered is DETANS. This molecule would be a 5-HT1F receptor agonist. Unlike in triptans where I was saying the molecule is going to be 5-HT1B1D partial agonist. The name of the molecule to be remembered here is LASMIDETAN. And the advantage of this would be that it would be filling up the gap for especially those patients who are having cardiovascular disease because we discussed triptans cannot be used in those patients who are having ischemic heart disease concomitantly present. Then because a lot of patients would be having substantial amount of nausea and vomiting, we will have to give domperidone or metoclopramide to these patients. Apart from this, there might be patients who might be coming to us with very severe attack. They're not able to take anything orally and the injections of sumatriptan is not available. Then in those circumstances, a low cost option that we can be using is a combination of prochlorperazine. This would be given in an injectable format. So prochlorperazine and along with this dihydroergotamine can be given slowly over two minutes. And especially if a person is having an attack of migraine lasting for more than 72 hours, then we call it status migranosis. A patient came to me in status migranosis, the headache is terrible or the person has taken treatment from various doctors over the previous three days and is showing me a prescription where multiple drugs have been used, right from painkillers to triptans to sometimes even the new drugs might have been used, but there is no improvement and he's still puking, there's dehydration component present. Then in these patients, injection of prochlorperazine, which can be given even intravenously slowly along with dihydroerbatamine can be useful especially in those situations where in government supply we are not having sumatriptan available and a patient has presented to us a severe attack which has been going on for even a duration more than 72 hours which is taken as a cutoff for status migranosis. Other drugs which can be used for management of migraine can be like acetaminophen, dichlorophenazone and lots of time patients might be even taking opioids either in a injectable format or may it have been prescribed in a tablet format. The problem with opioids is, I mean, opioids are useful for all kinds of pain, but we avoid writing them to patients with migraine mainly because the one problem can be that of withdrawal or the person can develop a craving for the same also. And another issue is that during the craving phase or during the withdrawal phase, there can even be accentuation of a migraine attack. I mean, this particular patient was addicted to opioids. They're not available. He's having a withdrawal. And during withdrawal, if it develops the type of migraine, it would be even more severe than what it actually is supposed to be. Therefore, we usually avoid writing opioids to patients who are suffering from migraine because your simple answer would be there is an increased propensity or there is an increased chances to increase the severity as well as the frequency of migraine attacks in a patient. In fact, the technical term that I would like to mention at the moment is 
he might give you a mcq in which even opioids will be mentioned along with standard painkillers and he says that this person is having to increase the dose of painkillers on a regular basis whatever dose was being taken last month he is now having to take a increase amount of dosage and still the headache is occurring though the person is totally drugged because of the opioid usage so your answer would be that the reason why the headache is worsening is not because the migraine has become worse it is primarily because of medication over usage headache in all mcqs of medication over usage headache i mean how would you give this answer he will always be having the word opioids or any opioid drug would be written in the prescription of the patient it could be a two line or three line question describing the excruciating headache attacks that are occurring in a patient along with couple of other features that we have discussed in the pre trauma and the post trauma phase but the main point will be that since opioid is written in the prescription and person can be having either a withdrawal or a craving to the same that is why the attack frequency and the severity of attack is increased this would be one of the important features opioids written in prescription of migraine and the attacks are worsening would be a clinical pointer towards your diagnosis and the mcq as mos that is migration over usage headache